One of the things that I love about certain parables is how Jesus takes something that everybody knows, everybody's thinking, and allow, and we are allowed to watch Jesus make a side-by-side comparison uh, to the lives of, of people. For us to be able to look um, as well and understand the difference between the two so that we can um, reflect the one that uh, will be held up as, the, as that uh, virtuous person or that righteous person or kingdom person or that saved person. We get one of those tonight. Jesus told a story, as uh, Matthew just read to us, told a story of a sinful tax collector who went to the temple to pray. That right there may even sound a little bit incredible as the people heard that. They would have thought that that is not quite the place that at least that the majority of tax collectors would uh, place where they would go and an action that they would take. But that's the story of Jesus. The sinful tax collector goes to the temple to pray and after he prayed, he went home a forgiven man made uh, he was able to be justified and was justified in the sight of God. And with that vision in our minds, then Jesus brings in the second character and a very different type of person, very religious Pharisee, also went up to the temple to pray and was not forgiven, not justified. In Jesus' day, that would have been an unthinkable situation that the tax collector was, uh, was forgiven and the righteous man, the Pharisee, was not, that would have never been talked about normally. But Jesus was going to bring it up. That's what Jesus does. The parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector found in Luke 18. That's where you need to be. Stay there. We're going to um, look at all that again. In this parable, Jesus spoke to and about people who were so confident in their in their in their relationship with God, their confidence was not in God, God's grace, God's mercy, God's forgiveness. Their confidence came from their ability to be righteous people, their ability to keep laws and simply to be better than you, to be better than others. And that was the the mindset that Jesus was trying to call attention to. It is a very sinful thing for us to build ourselves up and then for us to look down on everybody else. And that is what we're going to, uh, to learn today. In Jesus' parable, we see two very different men. And Jesus describes it. But more, more than that, the people know the differences between a tax collector and a very religious Pharisee. So verse 9 says this. To some who were confident of their own righteousness and looked down on everybody else, Jesus told this parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. Let's begin with the Pharisee. Now the Pharisee, as you know, uh, most of us have learned, at least in this point in our life, that the Pharisees were very religious people, very outwardly religious people. They belonged to a sect, this man did, he belonged to a sect of the Jews that went to extremes in trying to obey God's laws. But more than that, they went to extremes uh, uh, to, to, to live up to the rules and the traditions of their particular uh, group with that particular viewpoint. And so they were all about man-made rules and traditions that they often looked at, loved, and held in high esteem more than God's law, most definitely more than people, and most definitely more than people they did not like, appreciate, or they thought they were sinful. Jesus even told uh, and, and preached about these very same men that showed they loved their traditions more than they loved their families. So you can see the type of extreme person this was. He was very strict in his religious lifestyle. He wore showy clothes that were ornamented in such a way that showed everyone how much he prayed and how much he knew the law. 
with, with decorations on his clothing. That told people that. His prayers and his offerings that were done in full view of everybody were done just for that purpose so people can see their right, hear their righteous prayers and see how much they gave. He was righteous, but only in his own eyes. He was self-righteous. And he was critical of others. I would say hyper-critical uh, about other people. Now, it would be true, and I think you would understand this, that his friends were just like he was. Now, we're supposed to, um, to, to understand that by the comparison. The tax collector, on the other hand, uh, they were considered immoral men. They were considered thieves. They were considered traitors to the nation of Israel. And in that reputation that they gained actually was uh, well-deserved in, uh, in most quarters. Well-deserved. They earned that reputation. They often grossly overcharged people uh, in the taxes that they collected. They took a portion for themselves. They, they also collected taxes for an, an evil pagan government that ruled every as aspect of their lives, or at least most aspect of their lives. They were rich, they were hated, they were outcast. And again, this is where they have something in common with the Pharisees. Their friends were just like them. Now... We can see the differences in these two very different men. Now, in the parable, we also see two different men offer two different prayers with two different attitudes. The Pharisee's prayer is mentioned first. The Pharisee, verse 11, the Pharisee stood up and prayed about himself. God, I thank you that I am not like other men, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all I get. That's Jesus relating this man's prayer. Now, I think it's important to keep in mind uh, the reason. Remember the reason why Jesus presented this parable. Jesus is preaching about people that are just like this. In his description, he is describing real life people. And everyone hearing this parable, they know that. They know these type of people. Whether they admired them or not, they knew that it was true. And so that's why we keep the reason for the parable in mind. It was for those who trusted in themselves. It was Jesus is preaching and, and teaching about, speaking this parable, about people who by their own righteousness they would stand or fall in front of God. And they also were very famous for despising and even slandering other people who were not as righteous as they were or different than they were. The Pharisees' prayer was exactly that. It was a self-serving attempt to tell God how righteous he was. The audacity to tell God how righteous and good we are. Can you imagine praying to God and telling him what good people you are and, and that we are? This was um, how brazen this Pharisee was. But we're supposed to take that extreme and then we are to compare it to the other man, that different man who prayed a different kind of prayer with a different kind of attitude. Verse 13, but the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. That's it, short, sweet, no amen or anything. Just that's what he knew was true, that was uh, that he went uh, to pray uh, th that prayer for a specific purpose. You see here a man who wasn't praying about, oh, but he was praying about himself. He was praying and telling God about himself. But he was noticing the truth about himself. Here is a man who recognized his own guilt. Here was a man who made no excuses. He compared himself to no one. And he humbly looked down and stood off by himself. 
you can see the attitude and the words of the prayer are completely different. This, this tax collector acknowledged his sins and he asked for God's mercy rather than telling God how awesome he was. He was asking for forgiveness. Can you not see the differences between the two men, the two prayers, and the two different attitudes? All right, so uh, it's, it's kind of short and sweet, the descriptions. But now what is Jesus' point in the parable? What are we supposed to take from it? What are we supposed to learn? The Pharisee and the tax collector, remember, two different men, two different prayers, but both were sinners, right? But only one left the temple justified only one. Two men went in, one man went out justified, uh, one man went out forgiven, one man was shown mercy by God, uh, by God, and one man was humble. And if you think it was the religious guy, the one that did it all right and, and uh, as uh, Bo said this morning, crossed every T and dotted every I, wore his clothes just right, said the right prayers in the right way with the right inflection and the volume and made the show with dropping his money in. If we think that was the man that went away justified, then we would be wrong. That's not what happened. Verse 14, Jesus said, I tell you, this man rather than the other went home justified, the tax collector as opposed to the Pharisee. I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. That's a, that's a beautiful line right there. The tax collector was not justified uh, in the eyes of God, not forgiven in God's sight, not able to stand in front of God as a, a forgiven man because of all his good deeds and his law keeping, but by his repentant, humble rep approach to God. A humble approach to God. Right? So right now, what, what you're, what you're um, supposed to be taking from this is now for you and I to start comparing ourselves to the tax collector and start looking at his prayers and attitude as opposed to ours. This is the lesson that the crowd was supposed to make or get. It's the one we are supposed to get as well. The tax collector was not um, right in the eyes of God because of his religious good deeds, his law keeping, but by repenting, humbly approaching God, by his acknowledgement of his sin, by his faith in God, demonstrating, demonstrated by calling upon the mercy of God. He knew that God was a forgiving God that showed his faith. And so the lesson is that the tax collect, uh, collector, with that prayer and with that attitude, went home justified. He left the temple and went home right in the eyes of God. This reminds me of what Paul wrote a few years after this time that Jesus spoke. A few years later, in the days of the Spirit, in the days of the church, Paul called by Jesus himself to be the, to be the apostle to the Gentiles. Paul wrote that a man is justified by faith apart from deeds of law. What will cause a man to be justified like the tax collector? Because he followed all the rules and did it all right? No. But by his faith in that same loving, forgiving, gracious God. We need to keep that in mind, don't you think? My friends, I, I wrote something here and I'm going to change it on the fly because I don't want to be presumptuous. I, I wrote here, we have to be careful. But I'm here to tell you that I have to be careful of my attitude toward people, my attitude toward myself, my attitude in my prayers, my attitude and knowledge of, of who God is uh, and the life that I live and thinking that I am who I am not and realizing I am who I am only because of God and not me. I must be careful. And I wonder if you think you need to be careful too. 
I need to be careful that I don't believe Satan's lie, that I am justified and made righteous and able to stand in God's sight by living a good life of a lot of good religious acts and, and good deeds done. Uh, when, we think, when I think about it, what were those, those, those deeds? Were those deeds specified how the, the Pharisee viewed himself, those religious acts? Does the text tell us uh, the type of life that he was describing? Go back and look at verse 11 and 12. We'll read it again. The Pharisee stood up and prayed about himself. God, I thank you that I'm not like other men, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all I get. Get This man, on the surface, the guy was just fabulous. Think about that. That's what's what we want. That's who we want to be. The man prays, and not just regular prayers, he's going to the temple to pray. Extra special prayers. Because God lives there. I mean, just how he's viewing all of this. He's not like everybody else. Are we different than the, the sinful world? Are we robbers or evildoers or um, adulterers? Or do we make a living by ripping people off? Do we fast twice a week? When's the last time you fasted? Once a year. Right? That's the way we live, basically. Do you give a tenth of all you get? A tenth of your gross, not the leftovers of net. On paper, this man, he should have been forgiven. He should have been forgiven. But the righteousness that he was seeking was just simply all about himself. And he knew that God, God, I'm awesome. You're just going to have to just love me and let me into heaven one day. What the tax collector uh, and the, the tax collector did, what the, what the Pharisee would not do, and that was humble himself. The tax collector repented, humbly acknowledged his sin, and asked for God's mercy, and Jesus said he went home justified. My friends, the lessons here, I think, are obvious. And I don't have to push them or, or, or speak about them anymore, I don't think. But if you're not sure, I want to fortify those words. Because Jesus' own brother and Jesus' best friend also wrote about this same mentality that we need to have to be able to stand justified in the eyes of God. This is what Jesus' brother James wrote, James 4, 6 through 11. James 4, 6 through 11, he writes, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves then to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Come near to God, and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up. Brothers, do not slander one another. Anyone who speaks against his brother or judges him speaks against the law and judges it. Jesus' brother knew. He knew how important it was to be humble people that also didn't look down on everybody else. Peter wrote, 1 Peter, chap, Peter chapter 5, verses 5 and 6. Peter chap, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5 and 6, Peter writes, all of you clothe yourselves with humility toward one another because God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand that He may lift you up in due time. Do you understand that our, that it's, that our, our life of, quote, religion, our church life, our good deeds, our, the things that we do in the name of the Lord, the things that we, uh, that we are about every day, that, that if we ever get to the point in our life where we believe we stand justified simply because we do those things, we've missed the whole point of the gospel, the whole point of God's grace, His mercy, and His love. And so the Pharisee and the tax collector were typical people of typical attitudes that are common in this day to day. Wouldn't you agree with that? Is this a dead and gone attitude? Of course not. This is about people. It's about us. <coughs> And we have this tendency. And so one man was full of pride and scorn. The other was full of, uh, of humility. And he recognized his sins and asked for God's mercy. And he was justified. My ending question is simply this. 
Which man will we be? Which prayer will we pray? Which attitude are we going to exhibit before the Lord? Are we going to tell the Lord how wonderful we are? Or are we going to tell the Lord the truth about who we know we are and what we need? I think we know which prayer and which attitude we need to have. Let's do that right now. Father, I thank you that you have forgiven us, that you have given us your Son, that you are full of grace and mercy for our sins. I pray, Father, that we will always remember that we are absolutely and completely lost uh, if we have to prove to you how good we are by our deeds. Father, we do not have that capability. We stand here, Father, in need of the blood of Jesus Christ. And Father, I pray that our lives will just be an exhibition of our faith in you and our love for him. Father, I pray that you will forgive us of our sins and that you will cause us to be righteous even though we are not in and of ourselves. I pray, Father, that we will look on others um, and their need to, to be saved. Um, Father, I pray that we will be examples of those who can receive the same wonderful grace that we want them to have. Father, help us to live humbly before you. Help us not to be righteous in ourselves. Father, help us to pray prayers that, that, that where we humbly approach you and we confess our sins and confess our need for you. Father, thank you for loving us. Thank you for Jesus. And thank you for your justification and forgiveness. In Jesus' name, amen. If you need to come forward tonight for prayers or for help or to begin your life with Christ, now is your time. And I pray that you will make the decision to do so tonight. Let's stand and sing a song. And if we can help you, please come forward.